Hey guys, still there. Let's have a look at the Arietti. This is the tier 8 tank that follows the Challenger line. You can find it in Shishkin's line, and currently the line looks pretty empty. You got the Chieftain Mark V, the Challenger 1, Arietti, and then of course the Challenger 2. Now the Arietti is a bit of a exception in this line. The Chieftain Mark V has a lot of armor, the Challenger 1 has even more armor. Then you get the Arietti. And suddenly you're going back on the amount of armor that you're getting, but the gun on this thing is really, really of, uh, much of an improvement over the Challenger 1. And that's something that this thing really does well. It has a great gun. You're going to sacrifice a bit of armor, but you also gain a bit of mobility. This thing is quite a bit faster than the Challenger 1. So let's put these things side by side so you can see exactly how your new tank is going to behave. The Challenger 1 on the left, Arietti on the right. Now keep in mind I have both of these things fully upgraded and that does mean that the stats of a, um, sorry, a basic version, a stock version of either tank is going to look a bit different. Anyway, the amount of penetration on the Arietti is really nice. The Challenger was struggling a bit. You get up to 423 millimeters of penetration and that's where it stops. To compare that to the Arietti, I'm firing the heat shell as a base round because I'm doing a lot of PvE with the Arietti, or at least I did. And that is only the heat round. So your heat round has 80 millimeters more penetration than your base AP round does on the Challenger 1. But it gets better. If you look towards the end of the AP line here, you're looking at a stabilization, sorry, of a penetration of 594, which is an incredible upgrade over the Challenger 1. Of course, it will take you a while to get there, but once you get that kind of penetration, you're looking at a vehicle which can really do a lot of damage and penetrate most tanks frontally. You'll still have to go through weak spots, but most of these things can actually be penetrated quite easily. Now your gun is better and your damage per minute is a lot better. This thing fires faster. Um, it's slightly less accurate than the Challenger. I have found that to be the case and the targeting time isn't that good either. But of course that does come down to me not using most of the retrofits on the Arietti. Reason for that is that during the um, Black Friday slash Cyber Monday weekend where you got a permanent times 3 markup for every battle that you played, I played the Arietti completely towards the, uh, the Challenger 2. Um, it's going to be crazy, but I ground 800,000 credits in two days, or maybe three days. And that led me to unlocking stuff on the Arietti way faster than I could get the credits to buy all the required upgrades. So some of the parts of the Arietti are even stock. Anyway, the DPM on the Arietti is a massive upgrade over the Challenger 1. Hit points wise, you're a bit less effective than the Challenger 1. Of course, the Challenger 1 has that a massive amount of frontal armor. The Arietti doesn't really have that. And you're also going to sacrifice a bit of hit points. The Challenger 1, with the improved hull armor, does have 2,852 hit points. Whereas the Arietti, um, my version of it, is at 2,500 hit points. Now keep in mind that you are dealing with a tank that's one tier higher. So you would expect to have somewhere in the range of 2,800 hit points or more. But the Arietti doesn't really give you that. It's a bit of a different type of vehicle. Your hull armor is composite, or a composite armor, and um, while it is a bit less, it also gives you a lower modifier. So this is going to really affect the type of gameplay that you will be getting with the Arietti, since you no longer have somewhere in the ranges of 600 millimeters of armor on the front. But you're more looking at something along the ranges of 500 or less. And since most guns at this tier have a very high penetration, you need to be wary of what you're going to or where you're going to position yourself and what targets you're facing. Because consider that most targets will have a hard time penetrating the challenger at your tier. But once you upgrade to the Arietti, that becomes a completely different story. And this is where you actually have to start getting really defensive with this tank. Because it is, um, it's not a glass cannon, but you will take a lot more penetrating hits than you normally would in the Challenger 1. 
Another interesting thing about the Arietti is that, and you may have already spotted it, the side armor is actually better than the front armor. This is something that's really weird. It's the same for the turret. 400 millimeters of base armor, 450 millimeters of side armor. That does come with the applique, and the applique changes the armor a little bit in the sense that um, you get a lot more side armor. You go from 115 to 365, so the armor is well worth it. Now one thing that you need to note is that the armor on the C1 Arietti does not extend all the way to the back of the vehicle. You can see that it has a really heavily protected side armor here. You get massive ERA blocks, but they only extend to about 50% of the tank. Anyone shoots you any further back, so towards the engine block or the side of the turret up there, and you are not as well protected as you normally would expect to. So don't let anything penetrate you from the sides up there. Um, and of course the same goes on the other side of the tank. If you want to make sure that you're not going to get penetrated, you want to keep this side of the tank facing forward or angle it a little bit. Because at this angle, people cannot hit that engine block. What I have had happen is that the tank gets penetrated near the frontal drive wheel. And this armor is missing, or seemingly missing, one block of ERA. So keep in mind that this is a bit of a weak spot on the Arietti. Anyway, back to the stats. As I mentioned, the armor is a bit less, but what you're getting for that lack of armor, or that loss of armor, is better mobility. You have a top speed of 64.8, and I have found the Arietti to actually get up to that speed. It's fast enough and the engine is good enough to power the uh, tank to actually get to 65 kph. Not only that, but your acceleration is also a bit better. Now, one note to make, this is with the stock engine. I didn't buy the supercharged engine because at the time I didn't have the credits. Now I do, and by the time that I actually got this thing unlocked, I thought, well, for 0.6 seconds of acceleration, I'm not going to dish out 2 million credits. It's not worth it. So uh, that's why I'm sticking with the standard diesel engine. Good news about the diesel though, it catches a lot less fire than the Challenger does. The Challenger is a bit notorious for catching fire um, every so often. And the Arietti just doesn't get that. Now as far as the camouflage, this is an interesting thing in the favor of the Arietti. It's for a main battle tank, pretty stealthy. It has a camo range of 0.15, or a camo value of 0.15, whereas the Challenger has a camo rating of 0.5, or 0.05. Vision range is slightly in the advantage of the Challenger versus the Arietti, but I might not have the optics. Yeah, there you go. I don't have the optics um, unlock or the optics upgrade installed as a retrofit. So you need to take this one with a bit of a grain of sand in the sense that, uh, sorry, a grain of salt in the sense that the vision range on the Arietti can be better. If I were to install the upgrade which gives me, uh, for example, the Mark II augmented optics, I'd have plus 25 vision range and your vision range on the Arietti would be better, way better than the one on the Challenger. Gun-wise, the gun handles very nicely. I have a very good gun traverse of 40 degrees per second versus 33 degrees on the Challenger. Your reload time is lower, accuracy spread is slightly higher, and targeting time is higher. I have noticed a very um, noticeable increase in the amount of time that it takes to aim your gun. And combine that with the fact that this gun frequently gets taken out or gets damaged. And you're looking at a targeting time of around 4 seconds. I'm not joking. It is going to take you a long time to aim this gun. Now, as far as the upgrades on the Arietti go, you can um, get the main gun upgrades first. That was what I would recommend. Depending on whether you play PvP or PvE, I would go for AP in case you're doing PvP, or PvE, go for the heat rounds. Because most targets in PvE don't angle their armor well or are armored fighting vehicles, and they can easily be penetrated with heat rounds which means you get a lot more XP for them. So that's my reasoning behind um, going for either of these shells. Other than that, there's not really that many upgrades. You can get another retrofit slot after you unlock the applique. 
you get the supercharged engine and a mobility slot, you get smoke grenades and a universal slot, and that's it. There's nothing more to unlock except for the augmented breach lock Mark III, which is exclusively um, available on the Oretti currently, but they might change that as they're going to do an overhaul of the retrofit system. Other than that, you can also get three packages of a half a million credits each, which will help you get to the Challenger 2 a bit faster. For the crew, I have the commander, which is Maximilian Koenig. I had this guy in here to increase reputation gains so that my um, weekend grinding was going to go even faster. But I suppose that a different commander, like for example Mr. Holtzklau, would be better. And this is because... Um, your minimum accuracy is going to be a bit better, your reload time is going to be a bit better when an ally is damaged, and that actually happens quite a lot. Increases crew hit points by 20%. This is not that important, because I have never had my crew knocked out, and vision range increases by 10%. So, so let's just switch to this guy. Crew, I have them fully trained. And this is something that at the end, or towards the end of the Arietti, you will also have. Of course, it does depend on your commander and your base as far as crew skills go. But what I recommend is um, Spin to Win, which improves hull traverse. Makes you get that frontal armor or the side armor towards a target faster, depending on where your target is. The other one I have is Smooth Ride, because I found that the Arietti can get from point A to point B very quickly and is actually decent at firing on the move, but this will improve that quite a bit. I got the Do the Twist, which improves turret traverse by 20%, as well as Shoot from the Hip, which means that I can um, get a slightly smaller targeting reticule, so it doesn't bloom as much. And then finally, I got Preparation, which means I can swap ammo type faster, and the Rapid Fire, which reduces my reload. Now for ammo, I'm running with a sort of dual setup. Um, I tend to switch a lot between these two types in PvE. And of course, mostly during a PvP match, you'll be using heat rounds, or sorry, AP rounds. Retrofits, you have four slots. I have the gyroscopic stabilizer here to help me with that aim time, as well as the reload. I have two slots that I haven't used, because I was just trying to get this thing done as quickly as possible, and spending another couple million or anywhere up to a million credits on getting another retrofit was not something I was interested in. I do have the Mark II hull reinforcement and with this you are going to be quite a bit more durable. You'll survive more hits because you get about 10% more hit points. Consumables is the standard equipment that I always use in order to get those passive bonuses. The spare parts give me 10% repair speed and this is actually quite useful because as with the Challenger, and um, it may have something to do with the latest patch, but you just get tracked a lot. You lose your track the moment you run into any kind of vehicle, could be a friendly, and that's going to completely stop you, making you a very, very easy target. So get this spare parts upgrade, or the spare parts consumable, even if you don't use it, um, you still get the passive bonus. Medical kit, in order to gain crew resilience, Auto fire extinguisher, um, as I mentioned, it doesn't catch fire as often, but when it does, it's nice to have this. And of course, the high tier field maintenance kit, and this is something that in PvE frequently saved my ass, because you just take a lot of fire at tier 8, and you're not as durable as a challenger, so you will need to get the hit points back, as well as your ammunition, because sometimes you just go through all of your ammo. Okay, enough with the chatter, let's get into a PvP match. Alright, we're loading in Roughneck, and it's a bit of a tier 7 to tier 9 match. Where you can see some of the people are already getting tier 9s. BMPT72, Crab, Chelly2, Leo2A6, a couple of Ariettes, because most people seem to be grinding the Challenger 2 currently. A couple of Chelly1s, Leopards, and M1 Abrams. Those are all heavily armored targets, so I'm going to immediately switch to the AP FSDS round because my H, sorry, my heat round might not be enough. Now, as a warning, I have barely played the Arietti in PvP because I found that I can get, especially during this very high income weekend, I can get a lot more XP if I just continue to grind PvE. 
I can get about 10,000 PvE experience per match and a match lasts on average 7 minutes. So that's the reason why I haven't been playing PvP much. So I don't really know how this thing is going to perform in PvP. Anyway, um, what I need to be aware of is that my turret armor is pretty good. My hull armor is not so good. There's no artillery, so I can go hull down in a position without being at very great risk of getting shelled. And my vision range is okay. So let's hope that this tank can sustain itself or defend itself no matter, or no matter what it comes up against. Oh, there's the targets already. Interestingly, they haven't spotted me. Oh, correction, they have spotted me. So I just uh, found three Arietes and one Challenger, I think. Also being designated, so there's either a BMD or the Crab around. Possibly the BMPT. And um, I'm still being lit up, of course, because I'm being designated. We're clear. I'm going to have to wait till that goes out, so I can try to get myself out of this position. Oh, taking fire there. BMD4. Unfortunately, I don't exactly have the spotting range to break through the camo value of a BMD4. And he does have the HE damage to go through my armor. Now, I wish I had installed those smoke grenades. I have to keep pulling back fast. And this is where that side armor really comes in useful, because you just heard three big dings. And they all bounced off the side of my armor. Oops. Knocked the tracks off a T90 there. Now I'm in a bit better position here. At least I'm not as exposed. Snapshot. Didn't get a shot on the Ariete there. There's another Ariete back there. He's too much... Yeah, I, I had an opportunity to go through the side there, but I blew it. No shot. As you can see, I'm not really good with this thing in PvP mode. I'm much more of a PvE guy with this vehicle. He has his turret angled too much. I'm going to need this T90 to start taking some hits or doing some damage because we're getting overwhelmed slowly but steadily. There's a lot of challengers up there, but we seem to be engaging them from two flanks. That could work. I'm just going to have to be patient. That's the Arietti. Very much angled. Won't get a shot there. But I might have a shot on the side of the turret of the Challenger. Yeah, got it. Arietti seems to want to try and take a shot at me. Oh, he's exposing his turret. Always go for side shots on turrets if you can get them. They're easier to go for than getting through the hull. No pen. I lost my commander sight. Wouldn't be surprised if we're also going to start seeing aggression from this flank. Oh, there's even AT uh, gems coming in. That flank right there. That might be the BMPT. Oh, hello. This is gonna hurt. This thing I'm gonna load heat for. That is, if I can ever get my gun to bear on this target. Good pen. Did overmatch him, but so be it. Okay, you're screwed, buddy. Over there. Now they're all coming in. This is probably gonna kill me. Yep, the ramming from the 2A6 got me. So, not my proudest moment right there. Uh, still did 2,500 damage, so about my own hit points. A little over. But PvP for me in this vehicle is much better, because I'm just not that great of a player at these higher tiers. So I'm going to pause it here, wait for the results screen to come up, and then take you into a PvE match so you can see how it performs there. Alright, as I mentioned, not really my proudest moment. I did get 12,000 XP for that, because I also did quite a bit of spotting. 
And with that, I did manage to make third in the team. But still, it doesn't feel like I did that much for the team. I got a decent amount of damage off, but I think that the spotting was mostly the useful part of my contribution here. Now let's have a look at the armor. Um, I mitigated 4,500 points of armor. So the armor on the Arietti does work, and especially those hits that I took early on and were going into the side ERA package, those really got this thing up as high as it did. Of course, some of the other shells also bounced off my turret, but most of the damage that I mitigated was due to the side armor on the Arietti. So don't think that this is just ERA. It is actually quite a lot more durable than that. Now, as I mentioned, there is currently a, um, let's see, where is it? A times three multiplier going on here, the boost times three. So as far as the performance that I actually got is closer to 2700 XP. That is normal, I suppose you could say, for a tier eight battle, or at least it's normal for me. Now, this was PVP. Let's see how well this thing performs in PVE, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Let's go into a stormy winter. It could take a while for this thing to actually get going, so I'm going to pause it here and unpause it when we get going. All right, stormy winter. We're loading in with another Arietti, a Stingray, a Challenger 1, and a T80. So we got enough armor, and the Stingray might be able to go for secondary objectives. But this is a pretty small map, and the Arietti is fast enough to do that on its own. Now in PvE, and I know it isn't for everyone, I always start out with loading HE rounds or heat rounds. And the heat rounds are going to help me do quite a bit of damage, because mostly the targets around the targeting area are going to be AFVs. They're not going to have that much armor. Some of them will have ERA or a cage construction around it to protect them. So keep that in mind as you're picking your target. But I usually switch back and forth between AP rounds and heat rounds quite a bit and you're gonna see me do that in this gameplay. Now I don't pick these gameplays, um, I just press record and see what happens so you have an idea of what an average battle looks like. I always come up through the river on this flank because most of the tanks that I drive have good gun depression and with the gun depression of course I can keep my turret very well protected or keep my the body of the tank well protected. Now, unfortunately, the targets that are popping up here are not presenting a good target for heat just yet. There's the Abrams. There's another Abrams. I might go... S yeah, got the side of its turret. And now I'm going to switch to AP. This thing does not seem to want to get out just yet. No pen. Pen on the Arietti is good, but it's not that good. You're not going to go through the side armor or something like that. Bounced off the side of the turret there, unfortunately. Arietti's backing up. Yeah, he's defended behind the challenger. I'm going to go for the secondary and wait for more targets to pop up. Which you usually don't have to wait long for. There's already another M1A1 coming up. I usually don't waste a round on this, I just tap it with the rear of the tank or whatever I happen to have pointing at the target at that stage. I waited with my round there a bit before I fired so that I had the best chance of hitting his engine block. And I'm going to switch to heat because I'm at the rear of the tank and I can do a lot of damage against an M1A1 by firing heat at it. If it would be so kind to keep presenting its ass towards me. Unfortunately, not so much. But that one is. Bit of fireworks as the fuel drum goes up. He got hit, and there you go. Target is down. You can see aiming takes a while. That's something you have to get used to with the Arietti after the very, very good gun performance on the Challenger 1. I'm not going to say that the gun on the Arietti is bad, because you have a lot more penetration and your rounds do quite a bit more damage, as well as having the option to fire heat rounds. But it just takes a while for the gun actually to snap to a target. Alright, that's the secondaries. I still have heat loaded, so let's do a lot of damage to this BMD-4. And as with the Challenger, 
you're a very heavy target. It seems to be slightly less in weight than the weight of the Challenger 1. But you can still use this thing as a battering ram rather effectively. Now this thing is still presenting its side and rear, so I can go through that. Got hit by the T90 MS. I switched to AP the moment I saw this thing. And so long as you just press your uh, ammo selector once, it's going to load the next shell with that type of ammunition. If you double tap it, of course it's going to switch right away. But I usually don't want to waste a shell that's in my gun already because it does take six or seven seconds to reload this gun. Not the best angle at getting this T90 MS. I do not want to get shot in the side by that monster gun. Which I usually call Thor's hammer because if that thing hits you, you're just gonna lose about 700 to 800 hit points. Depending on the type of ammo and the angle that he has on you. Now let's see, I'm doing pretty bad as far as damage goes. I'm fourth in the team. It's because I'm not penetrating most of my targets. Not the best round. Time to start changing that. Good impact there. Five and a half, 556 damage. Close in. Fire on the move. Target down. Usually there are a few more targets up there. Let's go for the area. Unfortunately, if I go through, no, I can't go through here. I'm not. I don't want to trigger the cap circle just yet. Five twenty-seven. The moment you trigger the cap circle, a lot more targets are going to spawn. So always check if your allies are ready for that, because if they're out of position, they can get overwhelmed rather easily. Unfortunately, AMX Leclerc here didn't really care about that. A lot of AFVs around, so I'm going to switch back to heat. Try and do some more damage against those targets with heat rounds. And your heat rounds have 80 millimeters of penetration less, but they do quite a bit more damage. There's not the BMP-3. 683 damage. Immediately switching to a new target because I know that my buddy on the left is going to take care of that target. Arietti trying to... No, he's not going to turn. Okay, let's finish that one off. I'm going to wait till I get to rear of this ram car. I'm trying to get to. Bounced around there. Should have zoomed in, really. Somehow I bounced off of that, but I destroyed his gun. He's going to be quiet for a bit. There you go. Alright. Let's see if I can deal about this Arietti. And he just started turning around. Turned around too much, though. Exposed the other angle of his tank. Destroyed. Shell going in. Bit of a snapshot, but it worked. I don't want to get too much into the cap circle, because before you know it, I'm going to be capping, and I want to continue to farm here. But I can ram this leopard to death, and continue to fire at the T90 there. There you go. That's how you use the weight of this tank as a weapon. There's something behind me. That's a T90. I do not want to let that thing shoot me in the rear. At all. The other Arietti that we have is capping. I hope he's going to change his mind about that. Oh, there's also a Ramka there. Love it how the AI always seems to want to expose its side to the Arietti. And you don't need much of the side of an enemy tank in order to do a lot of damage to it. You can usually wait until they just swing that ass around and either go through it with a heat round or AP. And you can even penetrate this thing up front. That's what you get with these very, very high impact rounds. No penetration. See, the weak spot on this tank is pretty small. The lower frontal plate is heavily angled. Oh, wonderful, four damage. It's heavily angled, but you can go through it. Switch back to heat. 334.
I'm trying to get the rear of this Ramka because that's where you do most damage. Of course, the gun depression is not really helping. There you go. 657. Otherwise, I would have done about 400 something. There, someone else took it out. And I'm tracked. Impact with the Ramka got my track blown off. 13,000 damage. And suddenly, I'm getting very, very close to the others. Of course, T-80 always does quite a bit more damage than the Arietti. Simply because it has that very, very monstrous damage for AP rounds. 657. And I destroyed his fuel reserves. So if he wouldn't have died instantly, I would have put him on fire and he would have started burning up. Now, I think we got most of the objectives. It looks pretty clear. So it should be able to cap, but just to be sure, I'm going to do another sweep of the village here. You never know what might pop up. And more often than not, that seems to be a heavily armored target. So I'm going to preload armor penetration. But I doubt I'm going to fight anything in 12 seconds. Let alone get a shot at it. Five seconds. No, this thing's done. All right, mission done. Okay, again, 12,500 XP, 61,000 credits, so that's quite a bit less. 14,000 damage done, 9,000 points of spotting damage done. And I got the target award, which means that I received the most hits of any player and survived. In the teams, I managed to make second place, mostly because I did quite a bit of spotting. And spotting damage definitely helps you get a lot of XP. As you can see, I only fell 5 points of XP behind the guy in the T-80, who actually did a lot more damage than me. Details, again, there's a boost active, and um, the damage that I mitigated is higher in PvE than in PvP, and it should be. Bots are just not as smart as players when it comes down to weak points, angling, and stuff like that. So it's much easier for me to um, mitigate a lot of damage with this tank. So we've got a mitigation range of ratio of 7.17, and, of course, um, that doesn't really do anything for your XP, but it's nice to see how well you perform. My final conclusion or review of the Arietti, um, it feels a bit Joe Average. It doesn't really feel like it belongs in the line of the Challenger 1, 2 and the Centurion, or the Chieftain. It's a bit of an odd tank, and it feels rather meh. It's just not that spectacular on any end. Its armor is good, but not outstanding. Its gun is pretty damn good, but of course, once you compare that to your buddy, which is the T90 at this tier, you're going to see the T90 has some very, very destructive weaponry as well. 600 millimeters of penetration, which is only slightly higher than mine. But it can also do a lot more damage with a heat round, while it still has the same penetration. Mobility is okay, it's not great. Um, and you do get four retrofit slots, which is something that not every tank gets, so that's nice. But I won't be keeping this tank. It just didn't do as much for me as the Challenger 1 did. So I'm going to sell it, and I'm going to move on to the Challenger 2, because that is what I got this line for. I already have it unlocked, but as happened with this weekend, you can unlock stuff a lot faster than you can pay for it. You get a lot more credits, or sorry, you get a lot more XP than you do get credits. So my situation is that I have nowhere near enough credits for the Challenger 2, but that will change a bit once I sell the Arietti. Now, that's it for this review. I hope you found it useful to see exactly how the Arietti performs in PvE and PvP. Um, I used it almost exclusively in PvE, and that's why our PvP performance wasn't that good. But I hope that with it, you still get a bit of an idea what the strong points, the weak points, and um, the handling of this tank are. If you found it useful, please hit like. If you have any questions about the Arietti, please leave them in a comment and I'll try to answer them. 
and I hope to see you in the next tank review or in the next Wargame video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.